Hey guys, today is a little bit different video. It's a little bit hard for me to film because it just brings back all these memories and in a time in my life that was really, really hard for me. Um, what is going on? What? I'm stressing. I got a lot of DMs recently when I did a Q&A. If I can get through the story. <laughs> I did a Q&A recently and I noticed there was a lot of the same questions I was getting again and again. And last year I talked briefly about my story for our Mother's Day video, but I decided I'm going to go a little bit more in detail and tell you guys just my story of having Jaden and I'm going to dive into it and give you guys a little bit more of a background. I also get messages from women who say they either just had a baby or they're going through something very similar or they're struggling with a tough relationship. And I'm not here because I know all the right answers. I just thought that I would share my story and maybe it helps you if you're going through something similar to this. And I'll share just the lessons I learned along the way. Jaden is also aware of everything I'm going to be discussing in this video. It's not a secret to any of my friends or my family or especially to her. I've just never sat down and gone into this much detail about my story. Just to give you a little context of my life before I found out I was pregnant. I was super involved in my high school. I was on the cheer team. I was really involved with school activities. I loved hanging out with my friends. Things were going great. I'm the oldest of four siblings and my parents were more strict with me. And so I was really looking forward to going to college and having a little bit more freedom, not having a curfew. I was really career focused. I never had plans to get married or have kids. That was not something that was on my radar. I never had a boyfriend in high school. I, of course, liked guys and, you know, but I never called anyone my boyfriend. I would also say at the time I was very naive and I thought I was invincible. I was the kind of person that things always went well for, so I never really had any struggles in my life. I met a guy at my school he had a full ride scholarship for basketball. He was really tall. I was interested in him for all the superficial reasons. I mean, I was 19, so I wasn't thinking of marriage material or anything. And he was a few years older than me, which he said that he had had a business back home. And so he had come back to college later on. Like, why are you in college four years after everyone else's? My parents thought that it was strange, but you know, I wanted to do my own thing. It was my own freedom. And shortly after we became boyfriend and girlfriend. So it was my first official boyfriend. And I always had guy friends. I was always very independent and he started to be controlling and isolating. Didn't want me to see my family as much. Didn't want me to hang out with my guy friends. There was a lot of warning signs that I ignored and just thought, you know, he's just jealous. It's probably nothing. Being with him, it was always that I had to convince him I liked him. He would look for compliments. It was that constant need for reassurance. I hadn't had a boyfriend before, so like maybe this is how it is, you know? There were all the little warning signs that had happened. I continue to ignore, but it came to a head one night. We were at a party and I was talking to my guy friends, having fun. Everyone was drinking. We were in the apartment complex where my boyfriend lived in and he asked me to come with him to get a sweatshirt from his room. So the party was happening in the center so you could see everything that was going on. And so I did and he ended up taking my car keys and my phone and away from me and locking me in the room that entire night. 
Um, I was so embarrassed the next day. I, he finally let me out. He said he was drunk and sorry. Um, I didn't go to campus police. I didn't file any police report. I was mortified that I was such a confident, independent woman, so I thought, and that I let this guy do this to me. It was so embarrassing. I didn't tell any of my friends. So the next day he sends me flowers. It was the same thing. Apologize. It wasn't me. I was drinking. I had had enough. It was only had this had all happened in four months we had been dating for. So it wasn't serious. I was realizing this is going to continue to get worse. If he was willing to do this to me, what else is he willing to do? And so I broke it off. So I was so happy to be done. I kind of thought it was like a burden lifted. The fact that now I can just hang out with my friends and not always feel like, oh, sorry, I have to explain what I'm doing constantly. And 10 days later, I found out I'm pregnant. I was more disgusted with myself with the fact that I thought I was invincible and I didn't need to. It's really bad to say, but I thought that that didn't happen to people like me. And it was a very prideful way for me to think that those situations are so below me. And it was a very humbling experience for that to happen to me. And then for me to be realizing like, what, it, what am I going to do? This is not in the plan at all with a guy that I was so happy to be free of. And I just, you know, I need to, I need to have an abortion. I need to move on from this and bad mistake, not do it again, learn my lesson and move on. Um, so, uh, I'm shaking thinking about this just because it's like, such a sad and weird time in my life. Um, hmm. At the time he was being really nice to me and, you know, we weren't together, but he was just, you know, really being so apologetic that I did tell him I was pregnant. And I said, you know, we're having the abortion. This means nothing going forward that way and he agreed he said yes let's do that it's fine and a few days went by and he realized we weren't getting back together suddenly he said you know I don't believe in abortion and you need to have the baby I'm like excuse me no we're not doing this this is not you don't have an option in this for me, it was more, I didn't want to be tied to him and I most certainly didn't want to have a child with him. So I talked to my friend Jenna, I told her everything that was going on and she said, I'll come with you to the abortion then. Just leave him out of it. Let's just do it before your parents, they don't need to find out. You know, she was just supporting me in what I wanted to do. And so I felt a lot stronger because I felt like I can do this, leave him out of it, move on with my life. So I had an appointment for an abortion and for some reason when they called me to confirm, I just wanted to push it off a few more days. I thought, okay, I'm not ready this time because I need a little bit of downtime after and I was working. I think I was, I was working at Applebee's. Um, of course I was worried about my work schedule and of course I didn't want anyone to know. So I had to make sure everything was in place for me to go get the abortion and it to work out. 
So I moved it a few days later. And in the meantime, he would call me and tell me to pick him up from somewhere. And when I said I wouldn't, he'd say, okay, well, you know, I'm just going to tell your parents that you're pregnant. That was the last thing I wanted. I just needed to get to my appointment. And then if he, if he told them, then I could just say he was making it up or he was lying. They would never know anything differently. So I ended up doing a few of his demands that week just to make him happy. It's like beyond me that I did that. But anyway, I, it was May when I found out I was pregnant. So it was almost going into summer and Applebee's was having a cookout summer kickoff pool party and I was going to go and he didn't want me going because there was going to be guys there. So he said, if you go to that pool party, I'm going to call your parents and tell them you're pregnant. So I called Jenna and I'm like, he's saying it again. This is the fourth time I've had to do something. She's like, you know, he hasn't done it yet. Just screw it. See if he tells them he's not going to tell. So like we were talking back and forth and I ended up thinking, you know, he's not going to tell them he's, he's such a coward in so many ways. He's not going to do that. And getting ready for the pool party. My dad comes into the bathroom and he said, just called me. And like the pit in my stomach, thinking about that feeling. It was just such a gross way for my parents to find out. I was just like so disgusted because now they knew and they knew in the sense because I didn't do what he wanted me to do. And my parents were devastated. My mom was crying on the floor. Um, they're like, how? Like what? terrible and they thought he had come to them out of concern and love for me and I ended up telling them what had happened this whole time I said he's been blackmailing me I'm not allowed to do certain things I just need to have my abortion and move on with it And I was so glad my parents did find out because I wasn't ever planning on telling them. And it almost lifted this sense of now I need to decide what I want to do. And it also gave me the freedom to talk to them about how emotionally abusive he was being. And I was so embarrassed to share that with anyone, especially my parents who had already had red flags and who had already said there's signs about him that I don't see is right. And of course I didn't want them to be right. But my dad always said, you know, he never looks me in the eye. He never does. Like that is such a weird thing to be concerned about. But my dad would always tell, tell me that he's like, I don't trust him. So Telling them everything that had happened was actually really freeing for me because I was able to just tell them everything I was struggling with. Anyway, my parents are very conservative and I didn't know what they were going to do and how they were going to handle it. We came together the next day. They sat me down on the couch. They're like, look, if you, whatever decision you make 
it's going to be on you. So they're like, if you have the abortion, you, that's on you. If you have the baby, we'll be here to support you. You can still go to work, still go to school. If you have an adoption, we can help you do that too. But it's really ultimately your decision. You're 19. You need to decide. It's not going to be us forcing you to be, oh, have the baby. And I was not expecting that at all. So that also put back on me this feeling that I was going to rush into the abortion just so my parents didn't know. And now they knew and they're saying this whole decision needs to be on you because you're going to live with it for the rest of your life. Whatever you do, whether you have the baby adoption, abortion, those are your options. Now it was back on me. What did I really want? I knew I didn't want kids. I never wanted kids. So for me to be pregnant was just the worst timing. My freshman year had just ended. I had just signed a lease for my sophomore year with my friends in the apartment that we were going to live in. I just couldn't even imagine being pregnant and missing out on all the fun that I had going on for sophomore year of college. I... I was doing modeling at the time and I wanted to get out of it. They wanted me to miss classes. I was really involved with my college. I didn't want to continue doing it. And they had called, they had called my mom's, oh, they always called my mom's home phone to set up the castings because I was doing it when I was in high school too. And my mom said, this, there's just one more shoot. It's an editorial. Just do it. It'll be extra cash. You know, the last one you can do. And then you can be done. But just at least finish it out because you need to officially tell them that you're done with this, right? She didn't tell me what it was for. She just said, oh, you know, it's a little like, it's going to be outside. It's athletic, whatever. So I get to this really nice house and... I don't even know where it was. And there was a toddler there. I was like, why is there kids here? This is so weird. Um, like, oh, it's for Parenting Mag. And it's an article. I don't know exactly the title. I would love to find it if I could. It was um, how to have a life after a kid or life after life after a baby. And I was shooting it with a, a guy and this little toddler and she was the cutest thing ever. Her name was Liberty. And so I'm sitting there going like, what are the chances that I'm on this shoot, you know? I'm sitting in the makeup chair and the makeup artist is talking about her sister don't even I was talking about her sister who had an abortion and now can't have kids and I I say are you sure that's the reason you know there could be a lot of reasons she's like no so I was just like oh you know I'm sure it's not the reason I'm also feeling super uncomfortable because no one knows that I'm pregnant there and I'm just going to someone know this is super weird that I'm on the shoot and then she's talking about this to me the last thing I want to be talking about was an abortion um especially because I had one in three days after the shoot so I got through the shoot and after the shoot is when I 